Veganism is surging into the mainstream. Everyone's vegan now! Restaurants and supermarkets are rapidly expanding their vegan options. And the mainstream media is talking about veganism more than they ever have before. For our health, we don't need to, it's we unnecessary. Did that just, uh, just biologically um, uh, and, and in our development <laughs> as a species, uh, we've developed, we've, met, we've, we've grown canine teeth. Where? Canine Show me teeth. yours. Well, they it's... look very flat and blunt like a cow's teeth. Oh, that's teeth. the molars at the back, so... but the canines... What is fueling this rise in interest? Part of it can be attributed to the influence of vegan celebrities like Miley Cyrus... I'm vegan! ...and athletes like Lewis Hamilton. I do feel the best I've ever felt in my life, in my 32 years. Physically, I feel the best I've ever felt. Uh, I feel incredibly clean and healthy. And groundbreaking documentaries like What the Hell. Everyone is buzzing about the Netflix documentary What the Hell. The film challenges the way Americans eat and links meat and animal products to illness and is causing many to go vegan. In this special report, we take a look at one of the key engines that's been driving the growth of veganism over the last two years. Anonymous for the Voiceless, or AV, is an animal rights organisation that's known for its Cube of Truth street demonstration. Founded in April 2016 in Sydney, Australia by Australian couple Paul Bashir and Asal Alamdari, the Cube has now gone global, spreading to 441 cities in 56 countries. AV estimates that at least 84,000 people have gone away from their demonstrations seriously considering making the switch to a plant-based diet. Activist George Martin brought the queue to the UK in December 2016. The simplicity and effectiveness of the demo saw it soon spread all over the UK, now operating in 56 different cities. But who are these activists that are spending their Saturdays on the streets showing slaughterhouse footage in the cold to people? Are they really as aggressive and militant as the mainstream media might want us to believe? And how do the public react to these potentially inflammatory demos happening on their streets in their towns and cities across the UK? Plant-based news went to Bristol, UK to find out. Welcome to this special edition of Plant-Based News Spotlight. I'm Patrick Crom, aka Vegan Pat, and I'm reporting today on the largest ever Cuba Truth that's gone on in this city of Bristol, which is actually the second city to have a Cuba Truth demonstration. Now, as you can see behind me, there's one cube over here, and we've got actually two cubes going on today. So lots of activists come out here to show their support for animal rights. And I want to be seeing really if the mainstream media is right about this militant, aggressive, vegan activist idea. Speak to some of the activists and also speak to some of the public as well, see what they think of the cube. So George, could you explain to us a bit about how the cube actually works? So there's, it's sp sort of split up into two teams. Now the cube team are actually the non-interactive part of the demo. So they have to stand there still, they don't talk. They're the guys that wear the masks or hold, and they hold the signs or they show the footage. Now it's their job to sort of just stand there, present them with the footage, the truth so to speak. And then the outreach team are the ones that actually engage with the public, uh, asking the public questions about the sort of footage that they're looking at, trying to get people to actually open up their minds and actually think about what they're buying when they go into a store because most people don't actually think about it yeah and what what's the uh, the idea of the masks what what do you what does that bring to it it's part of the the actual aesthetic and it's very effective because people are down the street and they think hang on what's going on here and they actually want to go up and approach sort of and, and watch the footage and it's that sort of statuesque feel that I think the mask gives about it so you, you don't talk to those people you're just there to you know they're the f sort of faceless people just and the the, uh, the focus so to speak because on the footage yeah. that we're showing. So people feel more comfortable watching something if someone's not looking right at them, I guess. That's it. You wouldn't yeah. want to go up to someone and just sort of look them in the eye as yeah, they're showing you that. Sure, sure. That's it. And uh, how do the outreach work? Um, do people, like, do they go up to anyone, just anyone and talk to them, or how does that work? Yeah, so if you're on the outreach team, obviously if, you, if you're if you looking around and you sort of see someone who's looking engaged in the footage, then you would go up to those people and approach them. So we're not sort of chasing people down the street with a leaflet or anything like that. If it's been a productive conversation, then we'll hand them one of our cards, and we've got specialised cards. Can you show us? Uh, on the yeah, yeah. I'll uh, just show to the camera there. So that's a card with our website. That's okay, actually yeah. one of the older cards we've got. We've got some newer ones than that. So that's the card with our website on. That's got links to all the good vegan.
and stuff on there, cowspiracy and forks over knives and all uh, earthlings, all that sort of stuff. If someone's interested in veganism, seeing the footage, you've got that sort of really easy way for them to follow up on that and learn more about it and hopefully make a kind of better choice. Absolutely, and that's our aim. We want people to actually go away taking something from this demo. And that's what we, we, we also want to be objective with our counts as well. So what we do uh, is we keep a tally of how many people we spoke to that we think took veganism seriously and who will actually go away with the intention of looking into veganism yeah. and potentially making the switch. Okay. And then at the end of each demo, we actually announce that tally. And you know, so far in the UK, we've, we've estimated that we've potentially converted thousands of people to at least you know either go Incredible. vegan or, or, or at least massively reduce uh, their consumption of animal products. These guys have been getting involved in the cube today. Have you all been, been inside the cube? Yeah, we were inside the cube for quite some time. A uh, good hour or so, freezing cold. Wow, that's commitment. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cold out there standing still, isn't it, guys? Yeah. Why did you guys feel like you wanted to come out here today and sort of um, spend your Saturday doing this rather than just putting your feet up or whatever it is? Well, we all love animals, don't we? And, uh, love animals? Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, we've seen a lot of stuff lately um, on uh, Netflix and probably the same as hundreds of other people and uh, pretty shocked about what's on there and we really want to make a change, don't we? And I uh, feel that animals deserve a bit more respect and uh, well, we've all gone vegan a few months ago. Uh, and it's going very well, going and we well. want to give that message to people. How are you finding uh, eating vegan, the, the vegan um, food? I find it quite easy. Um, I found it kind of hard to give up eggs, though, because I really liked them. Right. Um, but it's... We're like so trying though, new foods. Even though you really like eggs, what, what is it? Why do you feel like it's important not to eat them? Um, because the animals are being really badly treated. Yeah. To, so yeah. it's not it's not fair to for us to treat them badly just for eggs, really, is it? No, it's not fair. I'm here with John. Uh, John, what do you think of this going on here today? Uh, I think it's uh, it's very good cause. Um, yeah. Something something does need to be said. The state the meat industry, particular, is is pretty horrendous. I've seen I've seen a lot of these videos before, and it's good that like it's getting a lot more exposure. Right, right. People are seeing some things. So you're not vegan yourself, are you? No, no, I'm, I'm not even a vegetarian, right. which uh, makes me feel a little bit bad actually stood here. But yeah, it's something I've definitely thought about. You know. So so do you? When you see these guys here, do you think of them as sort of militant, aggressive people? What do you think of these activists? Um, no, I mean. I I think I think the sort of the the anonymous masks have got like a bit of a bad rep because um, sort of other like particular hate groups have um, have used them yeah, before. Yeah. And I must admit, when I walked down here, I was like, oh, what's this going on? You know, is it like EDL or something? But as soon as I saw it, it was like uh, animals and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, fair game, you know. So you think they've got they they got a fair point to be out here showing yeah. this stuff? Yeah, no, it is. It's definitely right. You know, if people don't say things, then you're never going to get change, are you? Sure. And change is what needs to happen. So, so uh, Aaron, when did you go vegan? So it's been about two weeks now. Um, and literally it was because of the Cuba chief oh, that uh, yeah literally just bumped into a guy and we had a long discussion and uh, he recommended the documentary what the house and literally after that vegan overnight threw out all my <laughs> <laughs> throughout all the chicken, <laughs> throughout all the milk, and literally stocked up on seeds, beans, lentils, vegetables, uh, soy milk, and yeah. Why can't why can't everyone be like this guy? You know, this, why can't I, it should be this easy? Yeah, man. How important do you see this cube uh, demonstration? Well, so it's to create new vegans. Uh, well, it's a very powerful form of activism. It's one of the most effective forms of activism I've seen. And if it's if the outreach is done correctly, it can be a very effective uh, communication there. Uh, obviously, bringing what happens in a slaughterhouse and on farms out into the public is a great way to steer the public away from consuming animal products. I don't know any other. Uh, I don't know a more powerful form of activism than showing someone what happens into in a slaughterhouse because it dispels the myth inside of their brain that they've manufactured through uh, some type of programming so they go wow is that really what happens in a slaughterhouse yeah so the it, uh, slaughterhouse footage doesn't lie does it yeah and would you would you think the advantage of 
being out here showing and then be able to have a conversation rather than just sending people videos on Facebook and, and YouTube what do you think the benefit is with when you can speak to people in real life well because there's a danger in showing people slaughterhouse footage and animal cruelty footage because then they think oh without a conversation they might think that they can just go buy a free range or go to the local butcher where they kill them humanely but when you have an outreacher you can explain to them there's no humane way to do this yeah this is horrible what's happening in this particular farm but there's no humane way to uh, exploit an animal yeah. to enslave an animal so with an outreach you can give them the full comprehensive uh, comprehensive abolition uh, idea of um, veganism all right guys um, so when you saw this today what, did you, what were your first reactions I thought it was really shocking Shocking. It, the way that the animals are being treated so did you have a look at some of the footage then yeah I saw some of it. I saw a lot of blood right stuff. and had you seen sort of footage like that before anywhere or no I hadn't you haven't no yourself or? yeah sort of on Facebook you see the sort of odd things about the way animals are treated yeah 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 and it's quite shocking especially if you see it just in the centre of town as well you see yeah, a demonstration yeah. about something you what think it must be quite important yeah. yeah what did you think of the mask as well I recognised that it was the anonymous yeah, mask yeah. so that immediately captured my interest it captured in it to come yeah. over guessing you guys eat meat and things like that yeah. what do you think of people like us vegans who are showing this stuff I think it's good to raise awareness of how it happens because yeah. you don't always see behind the scenes. You see the meat in the supermarket, but you don't really think about how it got yeah. there. So it's interesting. A lot of people say to vegans they uh, don't like them pushing their views on... Have you ever heard that sort of thing? Yeah. And kind of being aggressive. Do you, do you see it like that as we're doing that? Or do you see it... As, I mean, how do you see that? I don't really think it is because it's not as if you're going up to people in the street and you're like shouting your views yeah. at them. I think it's better that way because a lot of the time if it is like fly posting and someone kind of telling you oh you have to be vegan people yeah. wouldn't listen sure. but if you can see it then it's like a different story really. Yeah I mean yeah I think it's the same way like you're not exactly you asked about our opinion you didn't like you didn't try and force it down us you like showed us and then we sort of make our own minds up yeah, yeah. and obviously most people are going to think the way these animals are being treated is shocking because it is you can see in the video nobody can argue that it's not so I guess like the way you've allowed people to give their opinions quite good rather than yeah. sort of shoving it down our throats has seeing this today kind of made you think a bit about what you're eating a bit more and yeah it has yeah. actually made me think twice about yeah. it like I'd never really paid attention to the whole veganism thing that much before but it's made me think about it if we gave you some information would you be open to having a look at it and uh, checking it out some some links some websites some documentaries yeah, I'd have a look at it definitely awesome well thanks a lot for talking to us appreciate it cheers <laughs> thank you all right so I'm here today with Pete and um, how did you get involved with the Cuba Truth uh, well last year February which was the first Bristol Cuba Truth um, I just become vegan as a sort of new year new year's resolution okay and saw something like a little bit of online stuff that I came on and uh, thought I'm going to go down and support these guys more like in a supportive way thinking sure. like I'll come and get involved um, and then spoke to a really inspirational guy called Jay Esch yeah. um, very well known within the, the AV Cube uh, Society so he's a really good guy and, and I think he, although I was vegan and, he, and, and I could like have a really good conversation with him I think the thing that was really good for me was he told me that it wasn't just good enough to be vegan that to actually speak up for the animals was was a sort of almost a moral imperative for being vegan and I I really got that concept that I felt like I'd made the transition so I'd done my bit yeah. you know but actually then speaking when to him made you think about absolutely I think sure. well it's actually isn't good enough and we do need we all need to play our part because as I was ignorant one day if someone no one had spoken to me I'd have never made yeah, that transition yeah, yeah. and it's it's really our kind of duty to kind of sp spread the word so yeah he was a real inspiration to me to come out and join in a lot of people think they think they might think of activism as like a chore like they have to sort of do for the animals as like a thing they have to do but I mean do you find yourself in quite enjoying the activism you do at the Cuba Tree? Oh absolutely it's, it's, it's thoroughly uplif uplifting there's nothing no better feeling than to go away and to think that you've lit a spark in somebody that they didn't have before they got here and they can walk away with information and I think they they don't see you as someone who's trying to sell them something they only see what's on the cards there's the truth and I think when you give people the truth there's there's very little to powerful, kind of, isn't it's it? a powerful yeah. thing yeah absolutely so I came down to the Cuba truth uh, 
uh, about a year ago and I actually met Patrick there who was doing some outreach and I was already vegetarian at the time but I considered going vegan for, for a few weeks and I think you sent me away with a few leaflets or something yeah, about like I think it was about I, rock, I, rock I told you a bit about dairy because because yeah. I was saying about um, I think I said to you a lot of people they drink dairy every day but they have no idea how what the process behind that was so I think you said to me that it was the fact that we drink the milk from another species and I kind of went away thinking you know what that is absolutely mad you never thought about that no, before like that like right that. okay and then once you once you learn about dairy and things you just made the switch did you yeah so I started thinking about other things kind of like you know especially how we treat you know the females of that species and then the more I thought about it I kind of figured this is actually all a bit messed up and we should definitely I should definitely give up dairy yeah, yeah. <laughs> doing so far? I've not been doing any activism. I went vegan two years ago and it's about time I get on it because, <laughs> yeah. But you said you've been doing, you've been in the cube for a little bit? Yeah, I've been doing, I've been holding the sign and yeah. yeah, people, a lot of people are interested in what we're doing today so yeah. it's good. So is it sort of going as you expected or is there anything that you didn't really quite expect? Uh, no, uh, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect because I've never been to anything like this before so. It's a really interesting experience. It's great. Darling, don't leave. Darling, don't Question. Um, so if the animals were able to communicate to humans, so farm animals and things like that, what do you think they would say to humans? Please don't do this to me. The simplest thing. Just they would say, please don't do this to me. And is there anything else that you wanted to share today? Yes, I would say, you know, one of the best images I've seen in the center for a long, long period. And that presentation is well done. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for doing this as well. What would you say to people at home who maybe don't get into much activism and just are just vegan? What would you say to them in terms of making that next step? I would say that you know there's a huge injustice going on and you're standing beside and watching it happen and that is an injustice in itself. So as a vegan, you're a vegan for a reason because you found out about something. Now if you're going to be a bystander and witness something horrific happen without speaking out about it, where is the justice in that? So I'd say don't be as scared off by the word activism. You can advocate in the most polite, respectful way that you want. You can advocate in your own way. It doesn't even have to be street outreach. It can be cooking food. It can be uh, any other form of advocacy you choose that best resonates with you. So don't be scared off by the word. But as long as we're all doing something, because now that you know, you have the duty to act. Great, thanks a lot, Joey. Um, and just want to say thanks for representing veganism in such a great way on the media brother, recently. Give me some punch. Cheers, mate. Cheers, brother. Nice one. If you'd like to get involved, go to anonymousforthevoiceless.org and click locations to find your nearest cube. Then follow the link to join the Facebook group. If there's no cube in your area and you'd like to set one up, simply contact AV via Facebook Messenger. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Plant Based News Spotlight. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.